Hi, I'm Quincy, and today I am playing Democracy 3, a uh, game I picked up in the recent Humble Bundle quite cheaply, and I gave it a play and I quite enjoy it. So here's a little sort of, uh, introduction and, and review of the, uh, of the game. I'm going to play as Australia, which is very nice. Normally when you play these games you can't play Australia. For instance, when I was playing DEF CON I couldn't play as Australia. But uh, I am Australian, so let's play Australia. And yes, compulsory voting, it's got that, that's good. Term length should be, I think, three years, but that's going to be super hard, so I'm just going to leave everything as default and play. Now, the point of this game, or well, firstly, I'm just going to say I like these little things that come up in between turns, because it's a turn based game. Each turn lasts three months, and the idea is to try and win an election, or as many elections as you can. And let's start. So we're going to start uh, the game. We're going to have very bad crime. Uh, we're going to have fairly bad unemployment. GDP is not much good. Poverty and health are okay, and education is not too bad. So, and so we now, from there, we need to go and win an election. And how we do this is this bit in the centre here. This is essentially the demographics of the country. Uh, so you can see there's very few religious people and there's pretty much so-so about me and if you hover over them it shows them the things that they care about so stem cell research, abortion law, prostitution, that sort of thing. Uh, you can see there's a lot more people who are for instance socialist and they care about state schools and legal aid and unemployment and things like that. Uh, you can, people can be in more than one category as you can see because it adds up to more than, looks like it adds up to more than 100%. Okay, I'll just hover over it. This grey bit shows you how much it, uh, the, po the population is this. So about half the population, so from about there to there, half the population is middle income and they're not too keen on me either. Uh, so you can see from those, uh, from those grey bars, there's lots of socialists, there's lots of middle income people, there's lots of conservatives, lots of motorists, and quite a few patriots. Not, many, not very many religious people, so you probably don't need to worry about them too much. So that's the, uh, that's the demographics and what they care about. And so these things around here are the various uh, state of the game. The grey ones are policies. So here's tobacco tax. Everyone cares a little bit about tobacco tax. And then these uh, arrows show you what they affect and what affects it. So nothing affects the tobacco tax. But for instance, if I raise the tobacco tax, it'll have a negative effect effect on tobacco usage and it'll have a positive which means it'll increase poverty. The, the fact that some of these things are negative and some of them are positive, so for instance tobacco usage is a negative thing I, I suppose maybe, do, do you, well, maybe you want to have a country which is not, uh, uses lots of tobacco, I don't know. Uh, but yeah they sort of swap back and forth and so you have to pay attention a little bit on what they, uh, what they mean. Uh, the blue things are sort of items or states of things, so private schools. And it shows you, and here you can see that the more state schools there are, the less private schools there are. That's this spa, green one, this, sorry, this uh, red one going across up that way. So it keeps disappearing. Um, and the more private schools, uh, the lower unemployment, and then so on and so forth. And then these other ones, I've got a few uh, red ones, there's also green ones, which are positive or negative uh, events or items in your economy. So I've got vigilante mobs, and you can see that crime feeds in very heavily. The, the speed that the arrows move shows you how much the effect is. So you can see crime has a massive effect on vigilante mobs. And of course if you have vigilante mobs then conservatives don't like it, So, which is one of the reasons that conservatives don't like me. There's also green green items, but I haven't got any of those. And generally at the moment my popularity is zero, which is a bit weird. I mean, I just won an election, right? I just won an election and no one would vote for me. How did that happen? I'm not really sure, uh, but you'd always seem to start from zero and then you've got to build up. And so I've got five years, um, so that's 20 turns to get this up to get my vote up to about 50% so I can win the election and that's I think is the point. I mean the other thing is you just try out all the, all the things that you can do. So 
looking at this, I have a big problem with uh, crime uh, and my income. As you can see, I'm, uh, my taxes and income bring in much less than my expenditure, so I have to do something about that as well. Now, I just can't make lots and lots of changes because one of the first things we're going to do is actually. Uh, where is it? Tobacco tax. We're going to raise tobacco tax to try and make some money. And you can see here, it tells you what the effects will be. So, tobacco usage drops massively, poverty increases uh, a little bit. You can hover over it, it gives you more information. Uh, equality uh, decreases. Not really sure why that is, and everyone makes is a little more unhappy. But I do make a lot of money. But as you can see here, I can't actually do it because this this number here, which in the other main screen is up in the top left, is how much political capital I have, so which is how much I can get done based on uh, how things are going. At the moment, I've got 26, and I need 27 to raise the tax rate on tobacco, so that can't get done. No, no insufficient political capital. Have to just not do that. And so that's basically how it works. You can change these things and you can add new ones using these things up here. But you're bound by your political capital, so that tells you how much you can do each turn. Um, and that's how you go. And from there, it's just a matter of graph optimization. Uh, just incredibly complex graph that you have to deal with. I mean, for instance, here, if we look at recycling see what it affects and then you can go to the environment and you can see what's affecting that and it, it all gets very complex. So if I can't raise that what I might do is try and do something on law and order so I'll set up community policing because that seems to be a very popular thing everyone likes that so implement and then you can say how much you want to spend on it to get the effect and you can see pretty much all positive, it's all good, this is pretty much a uh, no-brainer policy other than the expense. And although one thing I've noticed is that the expense, I mean I've, I've, had, I've played this game and have mag massive budget deficits and it makes people uh, a little unhappy but there are other things which seem to be more important to them. Okay, so I've added a few billion, how can I make some money? Can I create a new tax that earns me a little bit of money? No, I can't have an airline tax, recreational drug tax. I guess one of the other things is you can try and create, you know, if you want to create a theocracy, you can do that. I mean, where's uh, law and order? For instance, if I had enough, I could ban homosexuality or ban divorce and try and create a compulsory church attendance, try and, try and create a theocracy or you can create a libertarian state. Uh, all sorts of wonderful things. A socialist state, based on based on what I've got here, which is a lot of uh, liberals and socialists and conservatives. I'm going to try and uh, create a go more uh, sort of centrist line. Although the other things you can do is you can do things which would uh, increase or decrease the percentage of the population, so you actually change the demographics to suit what you want. For instance, over here, creationism versus evolution. You know, if, I, if you only teach evolution, then the, actually the number of religious people actually drops. Um, but once again, I can't do that because it requires too much political capital. So you're very much uh, restrained in what you can do. And the more, more controversial, the more expensive it is. So what else can I do? Uh, tax breaks, pollution controls. Yep. I'll do that as well. So, decrease GDP at the cost of decreasing GDP will affect the environment. Uh, but what I really need to do is get a bit of more political capital, so I can uh, in introduce some new taxes, I think, or start increasing some taxes at least. Oh, was there a tax I could? Uh, plastic bag, health tax, uh, luxury goods tax. We'll add that, but at a low level. There we go, no, nice, pretty low level, just enough to make a few billion. Hopefully not cause people too much unhappiness, the capitalists and the wealthy and the high owners. 
otherwise they might start leaving the country. Because I mean, these events, as things, you know, if, as things change, so as these sort of figures numbers change, things can happen. Like uh, you can have a strike appear. Uh, these are you know these these red or these or the green which I haven't got. So you see here, there's various there's start triggers and end triggers, and there are various events which are they're not there yet. Which if I push things too high or too low, they they will appear. And I happen to know that if I have uh, a luxury tax that's too high, then you'll start getting a brain drain. People, rich people, will start leaving your country. And I guess that's one of the things. All right, so I will move on to the next turn. That's one of the things you need to uh, take into account with these games: is what is the internal model. Uh, and in this case, it's just, well, I, seems to be reasonably agnostic. It doesn't seem to be pushing me any particular way. You can do what you want with it. You can create your police state, or you can create your socialist utopia, or at least you can try. See how it goes. Uh, and then at the end of each turn, there's like a little report and maybe some events. So we've got a problem. Uh, let's leave that unchanged because we're going to we're going to deal with and deal with uh, our, our law and order problem by basically hiring a lot of police. So we don't need to do stop and search. Okay, so now my now it's gone up to 35. Let's go back to tobacco tax and ramp that up which is going to affect poverty. So you might want to think about doing something to bring poverty down. But yeah, so that's sort of basically the uh, the game. As you become more unpopular, or as, as if you become unpopular, or you particularly uh, you know, hammer down on particular groups, then you may actually get armed uprisings. Uh, that seems to be a common... Um, in the games that I played, probably about half of them have ended with me being assassinated seems to be a very common thing in democracy to be assassinated um, and uh, otherwise the other times I played I've just gone on to runaway success I built it up so there's no crime, health is high, education is high and there's really no issues and people just keep voting for me at 93-95% which also seems somewhat uh, unrealistic it's, it does seem to be a game which has a tendency to go to extremes well, let's see, let's see how it just goes. Um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed it. I mean, it cost me almost no money in a bundle, and it's definitely been quite, quite entertaining for s several hours now. Still at zero percent. Still at zero percent. This can change. This goes up very rapidly, but it seems to go down very slowly. Crime's still quite bad. There is a lag in the. Uh, there is a lag in a policy, so if you change policy it can take time to go through. Uh, it's over here, so this one it goes through straight away. Let's see if I can find one like uh, recycling. It takes well, just over a year for that to take uh, to that take effect. And you can see, it. let's see if what I've done has made any changes. So I, yeah, so you can see here, uh, oh, where's, where's something that maybe it has made a change to? Community policing hasn't really come in yet, so it'll be coming up soon enough. And there's tons and tons of policies, and there's tons and tons of new policies you can. These are all the new policy ideas you can uh, you can put in. And so you know, there's lots of really weird ones. Ban Sunday shopping. Um, rare earth home fabrication grants. That's like 3D printers. So there's lots of lots of ideas here. Lots of possibilities you can run. Keep you entertained for a while. There is a question in my mind about sometimes it does seem to get into runaway success and you do seem to be assassinated, but on the whole, a lot. But on the whole, it's uh, quite an entertaining game. If you're the kind of person who, when you see something like this, goes, Ooh, I wouldn't mind I know, try playing with that bit of graph optimization. If you're that sort of person, like I am, then this is the game for you. You will enjoy it. If you look at this screen and all these connections and just go, oh, that looks complex. I couldn't imagine enjoying that, then you are the sort of person who would definitely not enjoy this game and you probably don't want to play it. Um, so it's very much, I think you could very quickly see, just by looking at this, whether you're the sort of person, this is the game, uh, this is the game who you'd enjoy. And for me, it is. I find it definitely has that sort of, just one more turn, let's just see. 
Yeah, you know, can I can I push it and see what the what how the system works? Um, so for me right now, what am I need to do? 32. Why don't I just make nipples very happy by banning uh, banning um, uh, creationism? Because I'm going to pander to the people, the liberals. I mean, if you look at the religious, they're a very small group and they don't like me much. Liberals are a much bigger group. They also don't, they like me even less, but now they're going to like me more as a result of doing that. So then I can just go on to the next one. And uh, yeah, then there's all these various, various reports. Changing, changing cabinet, uh, changing your cabinet will uh, give you more or less political capital. You can look at uh, your your opinion polls, see how you're going with different groups, check out your uh, your spending, see how it's going, and so on. Those things. This is your cabinet, so you can see how things are going with the cabinet. They're all reasonably happy with me at the moment. Although if there's any of them who are up to, so this person's probably not going to be very happy with me soon because they're religious, and I just beat up on the religious people, as you can see. They're, uh, they're not so happy. But the poor, the liberals and the socialists, they are all happy and they are all much more uh, greater percentage of the population. So that's how you win elections. Pander to the people who are going to vote for you and uh, treat the people who aren't going to vote for you badly. Okay, and uh, that's been going for about 15, 16 minutes. It's probably about time I, a game lasts about half an hour if you, if you want to go through a couple of election cycles half an hour to an hour and try things out it's been uh, quite an enjoyable uh, game as far as I'm concerned um, I'm not sure how much longer longevity this game will have for me uh, I have to say that but then it only cost me pennies in a bundle so certainly no complaints I'm a, I'm a happy purchaser and a happy player it's given me many hours of, uh, of enjoyment already. So that's it. Positive recommendation for Democracy 3. And now let's start building up police to bring this crime down and hopefully make the Conservatives happy. Alright, bye.